All right, good afternoon. Here we are again for part two of lecture uh, 19. Our and this will be the final video and final lecture for ENGR 2302 Engineering Dynamics. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to do a quick e example of working with uh, free vibration and then discuss dampening a bit, define damping, and um, look at some of the uh, applications of that. So uh, let's consider an example problem here. This will be a numerical example. Okay, so let us consider a, a system that has, I'm going to have a um, block here. I'm going to have a block hanging from two different springs with two different spring constants. Two different springs with two different spring constants. And so I'll have one spring that will have K1 equals uh, to 4 kilonewtons per meter. Another a K2 equal to 6 kilonewtons per meter. 6 kilonewtons per meter. Uh, six kilonewtons per meter. And I am told then, or I tell you the following, or to, we're told the following, that the mass of the block is going to be 50 kilograms. And the block is displaced 40 millimeters down and released. Uh, block pulled down 50 millimeters and released. and released. All right, and, and for this, I want to find A, uh, the period of vibration, so we'll actually see how springs work in parallel, uh, B, the maximum velocity of the block. Uh, block max velocity. Didn't mean to do this, but this ended up being a very Christmassy problem. And the, the block max acceleration. Beginning to look a lot like Christmas in May. Okay, so let's do that. So let us first consider, let's consider these springs in parallel. And um, if I draw a free body diagram of this, well, here, um, I would have uh, something like this here. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to find the, the spring constant for equivalent springs. So if I, I want to look at a generic system where I pull, where I have a um, where I pull a spring or this board down, this mass down, a certain distance. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find the, the equivalent spring uh, system for uh, a series of springs in parallel. So I could go to a physics textbook or review it or I could think about it. And ignoring the mass, because again, I'm, I'm ignoring the weight of the object here because all I'm trying to do is find the equivalent spring constant. So if I this is this p is not the weight. I'm just trying to try to find um, find equivalent spring constant because all of my formulas have just a single spring constant. So I need to find the equivalent spring constant for two springs in parallel. Uh, for two springs in parallel. Two springs in parallel. So. Uh, P would just be a generic downward force that maybe a hand is pulling it down, maybe a motor, whatever it is. Uh, and then I would have K1 delta. And these are, are both, assuming this is going to remain horizontal, these are both undergoing the same vertical motion delta at any given point. So K1 times delta and K2 times delta. And the total force produced by these must equal P. Because we remember that the force, the magnitude of the force in a spring is equal to F, is going to be F equals KX. And so, balancing this force out in a static system, 
Well, P would be equal to K1 uh, times delta plus K2 times delta. Or I could say the K equivalent, just K, uh, K equivalent or combined or just K is going to, e will always equal P over delta and this would just be equal to K1 plus K2. So in the case of springs in, um, in, in the case of springs parallel, we can simply add up the individual spring constants. If you had them in series, you would have to do the um, you would have to do the inverse of the sum of the inverses, I believe. Yes, um, in the inverse of the sum of the inverses. Okay. Uh, here, but in parallel anyway. Uh, this is then going to equal uh, k if I put in the values. Uh, four kilonewtons per meter plus uh, six kilonewtons per meter. This will equal 10,000 uh, or 10 kilonewtons per meter or 10 to the fourth newtons per meter if I want to use standard units, which I probably do for our, ex our equations here. So then it's just a matter of applying the equations we developed earlier. Uh, so the natural frequency, the natural angular frequency omega n is going to be equal to the square root of k over m for a mass spring oscillator, which will be equal to the square root of 10 to the fourth newtons per meter divided by uh, the mass of, tw of 20 kilograms. And this will be 14.14 radians per second. Then ta n, the period, natural period would be 2 pi divided by omega n which would be uh, simply plugging in the 14.14 this would be 0 0.444 uh, seconds 0.444 seconds vm the maximum velocity would be xm times omega n and this is going to be 0 0.040 meters 0 0.040 meters times 14.14 radians per second. Radians per second. And Vm then is equal to 0 0.566 meters per second. Meters per second. And acceleration m, max acceleration, which would be at the midpoint. X, the formula is xm times an squared. Uh, an squared, or actually omega n squared, sorry about that, alpha n squared, omega n squared. And this then is simply uh, 0 0.040 meters times 14.14 radians per second quantity squared or 8.00 um, meters per second squared. And that would be the maximum acceleration. All right, and that's the basic idea of applying the equations of simple harmonic motion. And there are sets of equations we could study for um, things such as rigid bodies that are vibrating, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, I would like to also discuss in general some of the topics of damping. Okay. If I can find this, just a second. Okay, so damp free vibrations. Just some terms damp free vibration. Damped free vibration. Well, again, dampening or damping is loss of energy from the vibration due to dry friction, fluid friction, or, inter or internal friction. Uh, due to dry friction, fluid friction, or internal friction. Uh, 
Uh, then we could also look at viscous stamping as a particular case. Uh, viscous stamping, which is what we usually talk about. We have an equation that would that is something like this. If you have a um, a case, and we would draw it something like this, where you would have your W here, and then you would have your uh, spring here, a spring of a uh, amount of uh, constant K, and then you would have a dash pot, and you would draw it something like this typically, a dash pot, or a dampener. You draw it something like that. And we have a damping constant C. We use damping constant C, a lowercase c here. Okay? And uh, so if I did this, if I did a summation, I would get that, if I did a summation of forces in the vertical direction, I would get W uh, minus K, uh, or actually uh, times uh, delta ST. Actually, uh, let's, I would get something, I would say W minus. Uh, K times delta ST plus X uh, plus CX dot, or sorry, minus CX dot, pulling upward, minus CX dot equals MX double dot, and this would come to MX double dot, and this is really the mother equation here, MX double dot plus CX dot plus KX is equal to zero. Okay. So this is really our mother equation for free damped motion. The central equation for free damped motion. And um, I could say that uh, often we use, uh, when you solve the differential equation, we can, we can say that x is equal to e to the lambda t. And this can then be reduced to, and I will define lambda in a second, we can get a characteristic equation, what's referred to as the characteristic equation, which is m lambda, uh, m lambda squared plus c lambda uh, plus k equals equal to, is equal to zero, where lambda is equal to negative c over 2m plus or minus the square root of uh, c over 2m quantity squared minus km, or k over m, okay? And then, um, let's see, I wanted to find the critical dampening coefficient, cc. Uh, this is where, here, where this term is equal to zero, and that becomes then, um, where this equals to zero, cc is equal to 2m divided by the square root of m, or just 2m omega n, which would be equal to 2m omega n. 2m omega n, here, okay? Um, so here, And what does critical dampening mean? Well, we have different <coughs> kinds of damping. Heavy damping is when your C is greater than your critical damping coefficient. And so that's when you have uh, negative roots and non-vibratory motion. Uh, non-vibratory motion. So if you want to imagine extreme, um, extreme dampening, imagine throwing a puddle of clay against a wall. Or imagine throwing a, t a thing of wet clay against the ground. It doesn't really vibrate, it just sort of sticks there. That would be a case of extreme dampening, or extreme damping. Like it, just it just stops, yeah. It effectively, uh, for C greater than CC, the critical, it just, it just effectively just stops. It's not even vibration or It's not even uh, very vibratory. Critical damping. Uh, and so here x is equal to, um, that would be x is equal to c1, uh, c1 at any given time will be equal to c1 plus c2, actually no there's not, I'm looking at the wrong one, sorry, x is equal to c1 
times e to the uh, epsilon 1t, or sorry, uh, lambda 1t, plus c2 times e to the lambda 2t. Lambda 2t, critical damping, is where c is equal to the critical dampening coefficient. x is equal to, so the, the behavior then is x equal to c, uh, c1 plus c2t, uh, c2t, uh, something like this, uh, times e to the negative uh, omega naught t. So you have double roots, but still non-vibratory. But light damping is where you actually get a case of um, vibratory motion. Um, light dampening is when you have C uh, is less than CC, and sometimes it's also referred to over damping, under damping, etc. Okay. Uh, here. All right. C is less than CC, and this is where your equation will just be x is equal to e to the negative C divided by 2m times t uh, times the quantity C1 times the sine of uh, sine of omega d times t uh, plus C2 uh, times the cosine of omega d times t. And the damped frequency, omega d is the damped frequency, it's the omega naught times the square root of 1 minus c divided by cc uh, squared, and this is the damped frequency. And when I say damped vibration, what I mean by this is that it's going to have this kind of behavior. So damped vibration, you'll still get oscillations, but the amplitude of the, of the oscillation will decline over time. So it'll be something kind of like this. This is where you would have a CC or a C uh, less than CC. Something like that. If you had a C greater than CC, uh, C greater than CC, it would be, well, you wouldn't get vibration. You would just get something like, um, maybe something kind of like, oh, maybe, I'm trying to make it asymptotically approach. Maybe just something like this. Maybe that would be C greater than CC, just some sort of squishing kind of thing. Um, or just stops very quick, fairly quickly. And then maybe for C equal to CC, you'd get an asymptotic approach or something like that. Where it, would, it wouldn't vibrate, but it would asymptotically approach a certain value. That would be C is equal to CC. All right, and that's the general idea. Okay. All right, I think I'll let you go again a little early today. All I wanted to do was to introduce some basic topics of vibration, uh, introduce you some vocabulary, the concepts of dampening, etc. All right, uh, it has been a pleasure to be your instructor for this uh, lecture series. I hope you've enjoyed uh, participating in class and watching these videos. Uh, that'll do it. I'll see you on the day of the final, and as always, thank you.